Okay, so we'll begin. We're holding Hilkes Taruva Simen Kuv Gimel Din Nosen Ta'am Lifgam. This is a very interesting area in Halacha that is quite relevant today in Kashus, in various situations, even at home. Nosen Ta'am Lifgam means that we have a Ta'am, which, as you know by now, Ta'am Ke'ika, is definitely something that we need to consider if something becomes usher as a result of the knot, just like an iser needs to become bottle in order for us to eat the tarubas, the mixture, the tam needs to be completely diluted or gone, the shishim and the like, in order for it uh, to be non-existent. So even though tam is significant, a tam which is pogum, a flavoring which is defective, and there are various levels of defectiveness, various grades, perhaps we could say, would render that tam a no tam, in a sense. As we will see, there are various explanations as to what happens to a particular food item when it's pogum. What do we mean that it's not edible? Is it totally not edible? Or can it be eaten bishata dachak, as we say? At times, we can eat it, we have nothing else to eat, you know. It's passable. So, that's something that we need to talk a little bit about. What does it mean when, it, when we say pogum? There's different kinds of gimas too, because there are certain food items that in themselves are pogum. They themselves are pogum. There are some that in themselves are not pogum, but because of the mixture with some other ingredient, the chemical reaction, you can say that, produces a tam pogum, a defective tam. So the admixture of this ister ingredient into something, etc., would create a, a tafshil which is not tasty at all. The halacha of tam lefgam is taken from the same Gemara in the Derinah with the Zara that discusses the various situations of tam and iser. And over there, the Gemara says that we learn it out from, as the Taz brings it down also, from Lotech Lekol Nevela. And Nevela, we know, is Aser. What do we do with a Nevela? What can we do with a Nevela? You can sell it. You can give it to a Goya, as the Torah tells us, instructs us, right? So you're allowed to have Hano from non-kosher food. There's no Isser Hano, like in Basar Bacholov. You can sell it. You cannot go into business with Nevelas and Trefas. That's for a different reason. But the Torah says that's what you should do with a Trefa. That's what you should do with a Nevela. With a Trefa, the Torah says, give it to the dog. In other words, it's obvious that you can have benefit from it. So from this halacha, from this, uh, pasuk, from this pasuk, we also learn that that which is not ru'uyo, legir, that which is not fit for gear, is not even called an avela. Okay? In other words, that which is fit for gear, for goy, you give him. That which is not fit for him is not also. And this is, of course, a very important halacha. Oh, when did he get that? Yeah. That was very yeah. 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 So, since the Torah says, then the Vedas are allowed to eat to him, right. and something that he wouldn't want to eat, you exactly. can't give it to him. You can't so give it to him. That, that, from that, that it's this not, is not also, something that has an issue. From that has the issue from the Torah. The Raisa. Yeah, the Raisa. Yeah. yeah. So, based on this, of course, it would make a difference if this Isser got mixed in with the Taruvas Heter. And we say it's not also the regular halachas of bitul may not be required. And the reason I say that this is mixed in a mixture is because everybody agrees that I may not eat the iser in itself. In other words, so far I don't know exactly what Lois and Tamil Gam really is. All I know is that it, it brings down the grade of this food to the extent that if it's mixed in a taruvas, I don't have to be so strict as I ordinarily would be. But it does not mean, as of yet, that I can eat it by itself. Okay? Now, when we say that it, get, it gets mixed into taruvas, we say the following. It could have been mixed in completely, whereas the isur is completely melted away into the heter, into the taruvas. It's all in there, the original isur behave. Or it, we could be talking about even a tam, a flavor of something that's osur, that was niflat, that got into a tavshil of heter. That's a second possibility. The 
third possibility is that there is no food necessarily involved here, no flavoring getting mixed into the taruvas from the outside. A third scenario could be where you have the iser as an iser balua in a keli in a kdero itself. But it just happens to be for some reason, it could be more than one reason, that this tama balua in the kdero is pogum. Okay? We have not yet described, explained what makes, what renders something pogum. So said it's defective. There are various grades of pogum. And now I'm adding one more point, is that there are various situations where something can become pogum, or something can render something pogum. It does not have to necessarily be that it by itself, intrinsically, in other words, is pogum. You wouldn't taste it. It could be by combination, as we said. Or somehow, somehow, it can become pogum at a later stage, even though right now, in the very start, it's not. Since we are somewhat familiar about Tamarif Gam, somewhat from before, Halachas, perhaps we can already say it. Might as well talk about it, because, you know, before we get into the Mechaber, it helps to, to freshen up a little bit on some concepts that we're familiar with. What is a typical noise in Tamil of Gam that we are familiar with, that we know, that we can apply to this simon? A Tam, not an Isser, I, I emphasize a Tam that is Balua in Ekdera, that has uh, been in the Ekdera at least 24 hours, which, are, which in Halakh is called the Me'is Le'is. So by virtue of the fact that this tam was in the within the walls of the Gdera for, for over 24 hours, whatever tam is in there is considered a tam pogum. That's the conclusion. There is pretty much no argument about that. The period of time renders tam, not food. You can have good fresh food, not spoil, three days from now. So it's not just any iser, it's the tam within the walls of Agdera, somehow, chemically, whatever you want to call it, becomes pogum. It loses its effectiveness, it loses its real flavor after 24 hours. So this particular form or type of tam of tam gum we're somewhat more familiar with. But it's okay to talk about it because this is one of them. This is one of the ones that we will be seeing in this simon. And all of this, of course, makes a difference in a lechatchila situation, in a bedi evet situation, right? This halachas make a difference sometimes in situations where you have candies that are coated with uh, extract of some insect, you know, and the extract or or the coating is in, is not for tam purposes. It's only to give it a shine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all it is. Or color. Remember Chazusa from before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. the kind, yeah, yeah. And we talked a little bit about Chazusa, not in, for the most part, in this sort of not being an issue. But we, we, we're going to have to be concerned with Tam, nevertheless, if it's still there or not. And would you whether you use a Lechatchila? Because we talked about bitter Issa Lechatchila being a separate problem. If something is really usher, but it's so minute, right? That it's bottle, but, it's, but there's a problem of bitul is lechatchila. If it's done for you, it's in, in some ways it's for you. It's, it's, it's in lechatchila, so that's a problem. And uh, there are some ingredients that we know are, come from non-kosher sources that may or may not appear on the ingredients of a, of a wrapper, because America, the law of this country, has certain regulations as to what needs to appear in a wrapper and what not. And if so, those of us who want to be mehader in kashas, of course, would like not to see even a minute amount of cochineo or carmine, right, from bugs or from cats or whatever, these extracts, as an ingredient. Now, this, what, is, what quantity of ingredient becomes a, 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 it becomes a requirement that it should appear on the label? Do you happen to know that? I don't recall 100%, maybe 2%. Maybe, I don't so it can be more than 1 to 16 Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I don't recall, so don't go off your own. Uh, nevertheless, we spoke about the various other isurim that are not bottle of filo b'mashu, Dover Abinit, for example, Chometz yeah. Pesach, right? right? So there are, these are all situations that come about that nonetheless are sometimes rendered non-issues because of an additional uh, detail, and that's called Tam Rifgam, which is what the sim is all about. 
which really is a big exception, I don't want to call it an exception, but can make things in some ways, at least by the Eved, more acceptable. <laughs> there is an interesting uh, Isra called Balteshaksu, which the, we can see the pre pretty much says is one of the explanations as to why something which is Tam Gam may be also Midor Abonon. Because if it's not also Midor Tot Raisa, why would it be also Midor Abonon? So he has a sheet of Bugadasi of Balteshaksu. Balteshaksu is not Shosechem, you don't want to eat something which is disgusting. <laughs> Even though you can t- you can tolerate it, you can take it. The Torah says no. Don't make yourself disgusting by eating disgusting things. So what what we have right now is like this. But but that would throw dafka on on insects and all that thing. It just happens not to be kosher before it, certain. The meat no, if it's nisra, if it's nisrach, there are situations oh, where watch. even yeah, yeah there are situations where even an avela is already an avela, but it's nisrach. Yeah, right. So you can have therefore in time of gam as we said a flavoring that at some point is Leshevach, it was good. But later on, because of time, 24 hours, it has become Pogum. Or you can have something that to begin with is a time Pogum, okay? Or you can have a third situation where as a result of the particular mixture with certain food items, it makes the whole Tavshul Pogum. All right, maybe let's read a little bit of the Mechaber. So Mechaber clearly quoting from the Gemara, quoting from the Maskan of the Gemara, that anything which is Tam is Pogum. You can not ignore, but not worry about all the halachas you've learned till now. <laughs> In Taruvis. Even Birya? Yes, we're going to see what the story is about Birya. But for the most part, that's how it begins. Eno Oise Taruvosoy. Even if its own tam, because of itself, is not defective. By itself, it's tasty. It has good flavor. But it, by virtue of being mixed with something else, it is poigum that mixture. It's mutter. Mutter. You know, the Rambam many times will say about something, it's potter. If you did it, it's your potter, but it's also. <laughs> right? Here it says mutter. Okay, so keep that in mind. You don't have to throw it out. You don't have to, if it says mutter, you don't have to throw it out. Okay? okay let's take a quick example then. Did you learn a little bit about the famous rule of Kalim Shalgoim? Kalim Shalgoim, there's a rule, Stam Kalim. Enam bnei yoiman, not even, not, not even, not even goyim. I should say stam kelim. I, I think that one is a machloikis. But stam kelim, enam bnei yoiman. We pasuk it. Yeah, like yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. We, that's the way we pasuk it. Stam kelim is not bnei yoiman. In other words, they most likely were not used on that day. And therefore, if you have any doubt, I mean, an iser balua in it, of course, it's but the evet it's mutter. Now lechatchila, you're not allowed to cook in that keli. Even if it's, even if you know for sure it's Enab Ben Yoyman, for a different reason. It's, there's uh, there's Xero, exactly. And the Rajma has a whole, I think the Rajma has a whole deal on that, what happens if you did anyway intentionally, when you knew you're not supposed to. It would be a form of Mevat Alisa That you did it intentionally. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, in a sense. But is it a... Yes, exactly. In a sense, yes. So, you cooked. You cooked something in a pot, whatever it was, regardless. But it's pogo, you know for sure. Or you make that assumption based on that klal. Guess what? You can eat the food. That keli had for sure an iser balua. And there's so much iser balua that you don't have shishim connected to iser balua. Forget kafela, forget shishim. It's tam pogo. Very helpful <laughs> in certain situations. When this is the only head that you have in dealing with certain food items or pots and but so for forth. instance in a restaurant hotel which I would think well technically we can yeah. but we're going to talk about this yeah. uh, that's what would most commonly occur I mean it can occur it can, it's yeah. there where you that's yeah. where you most likely come across yeah. pots or pans right so under such situations it to occur with milk and meat right and we'll talk dish. about that we'll talk about the difference between milk and meat versus other resources but, but in restaurants or hotels you can in the 
No, in obviously in certain situations you can't. You're right. That's so, that's so true. There, so where they were, you did most to help. It may not help, right? But, no, yeah. But Yes, it is pogrom, not most likely. If it's not in Yom, it's pogrom. You can't use a lechatchila, but we're talking about a bidi evid situation. So anyway, so we're speaking about uh, a situation where an isur was pogrom, and this isur got mixed in in the tarubas. As the Taz explains, even though it's pogrom, if the roiv is the isur, that's not what we're talking about, that it's bottle and it's mutter. Because so long as the roiv is isur, okay, then it's like you have the isur bifnei atzmoi. Right? You can't have that. We're talking about something which is pogum slightly, supposedly. Not necessarily that's not royal achila, you know, at all. Something that is pogum slightly, that, that, we're, that what the Mechav is speaking about, that it does not answer the taruvas. When do we mean that it does not answer the taruvas? When it's but of roiv. So roiv is sufficient to handle this problem, but if you have roiv iser, then you're having the iser in itself. That doesn't apply. Right? So right now we're talking about a situation where there's roiv heter, not shishim, no, no, nothing more than that, roiv. And even though there's tam, tam, you need shishim, no. There's no real hana from something that is pogo. We'll see soon. It's really a machlaikas rajma and the ran. Maybe we'll talk about it now already since we mentioned that. The t- what's the reason why tam pogum really uh, is, is bottle? I mean, it, it's not something that's considered. The rajma simply explains that this is not tam keiker. Tam pogum is not tam keiker. It's not tam. That's the rajma's explanation of explaining tam pogum. It's just it's not tam. And the Ran is the one that says that when they said that the Isu is learned from Lotoichlu Kol Nevela, since over here there's no Hanoa, right? Right? The whole Isu of the whole Isu of, or the whole Heter, I should say, of Pogum is learned from the Isu of Lotoichlu Kol Nevela. Since here there's no Hanoa, it's therefore not included in the gather of Lotoichlu Kol Nevela. That's pretty much the difference between the Rashi and the Ran. The Ran is more directly inferring it from the Isra and the Vela, as we explained. And it was the Rashma's twist on this is, you know, it's just not Tam. But why does the Ran on the Vela there is no Isra Hanab? No, he meant, he meant enjoying it. Enjoying it. I meant Hanab, ple- I meant enjoying it, pleasure. Not benefit, pleasure. Not, benefit not, pleasure. Not, pleasure. not deriving, yeah, this is not deriving pleasure from it, so that's not called a form of Achila. I mean, there's no, you know, what you're eating, but you're not enjoying it. Yeah, thank you for that's allowing not, me to clarify that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's not, that was not included in the Isra, at least. That's what he says. All right. The Ramah says, Anything that is chashuv, like a birya. Remember birya? Just recently we learned about a birya. Or, or those that are similar to it. What's similar to bir? All of these things that are not bought to lafilu be'elef, im enam pugumim be'atzmom, if they on their own are not pogum on their own, afa pishe poigim im atavshil, even though they will make the tavshil not tasty, enam betelim lafilu be'elef. Wow. Why? What's what's the difference here? Okay, we, we could learn it. We could learn it inside the Taz. Or we can play, explain it by heart. By Biria, we don't go after Tam. What do we do by Biria? We go after Chashivas. That is how we consider something a Biria. I mean, because of its Chashivas, it's big, it's, it's a Biria, whatever. So therefore, once the Chashivas is gone, it's not a Biria. You follow? Yeah. A Biria, if it loses its Chashivas, it's Nisrach. It's completely rotten. It's distasteful on its own. Then it loses the chashiva of Biria. Masha'inkin, as the Rabbah says, when it in itself is okay, but for some reason, <laughs> in this mixture, you know, it's not going to taste so good. It didn't lose its chashivas. And that's pretty much what the Ta says. On its own, it's still in the Tarubis? Yeah, so even though there's no Tam... 
because it's defective, but it still has its chashivas. Unless it by itself has lost its chashivas, it has lost its taste. But if it itself tastes in, then you can't call such a thing chashiv anymore. But if it, it's something therefore preserves its chashivas, right. and would only affect the mentally, since yeah. it, you are not considering taste. So it's, uh, that fermenter does not re- right. remove this. Right. Okay. Maybe we, 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 we should see now. See the Mechaber and see base. Because there's a lot on this Mechaber, so maybe we should read it first inside and we'll talk about the shock and everyone. Okay, but so far so good. I mean, so far we understand yeah, what, what, what the Mechor of the Tam of Gam is, the various kinds of Tam of Gam. We haven't seen the various grades yet, but the, we've seen that sometimes there's an interaction that causes a food item to be pogrom. And this can make a difference, we saw so far, at least in birya. That, that birya would still remain a birya unless it in itself was pogrom. Okay. Sif base. Gam ze ein sorak shiif gom le gamre. Now the Mechaber is introducing us to the grades of Isser, of gam, of gima. This gam does not have to be completely unedible. Achie Cuts le ochloi until you are so unwilling, disgusted to eat it. Elafilo poigem tzas, even if it's a little bit going to be defective, it's not going to be tasty. Eno oiser taruvo, sorry, it will not make the taruva zasa. It's a big chidush, right? In other words, we're not talking about, don't think we're talking about something that's not edible, that is like keafra bealma, as one description. Dust, or keates bealma like a piece of wood. There are some f- times, some food items, some ingredients that have that kind of uh, hagdor definition. They fall under the category of being completely not food. On, on Pesach, it can make a difference too. If you have shoe polish, that is chametz, mm-hmm. but it's not even edible, it's not even fit for animal consumption, which makes it completely okay to have it in your home and use it. How much time do you so it depends if it's for the dishes or not. The people, some people are more machmer on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes? That example, the, 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 the problem is so strong that Einachi was kelp. Right. But for just to be a little bit off. Right. Are we talking about a little bit, or are we talking about... Right, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. The is going to be no, We're tough. talking about the average person would totally not be happy to eat her, would not find it very favorable, will think it's disgusting, will think it's no good. That's what the Mechaber says. To make it a pogrom, it doesn't have to be something completely, completely rotten. No, 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 we're not talking about sensitive, small sensitivities. Right. That's what I said before. There's some that explained this halacha, that we're only talking about if a little bit of Isra fell into a lot of heter. Avad Isra meruba letoch heter muat, rafilu mechze al mechze en oimim noisim tam gam. If you have a lot more Isra than the heter, even if it's 50 50, you don't see noisim tam gar mutter, unless ad she yif gom le gamre shen roi le maichol adom. In other words, if it's just a little bit pogo, you still need roiv, at the very least for it not to answer the top shell. But if you have more Isser, or even if you have 50-50, you don't say no Isser Tam Lev Gam is Mutter, unless the Pegima is of such a grade that it's completely rotten. At Sheyif Gom Le Gamre Shen Roy Le Michael Odom. It's not fit for human consumption. Nobody will want to eat it. It's so bad. Then, the Chidush is, even if you have a lot more Isser than Heter, it's so bad even though you have more of it than the heter, it's not royal achila. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Sure, all of these halachas are, are the, what happens if you can fix it, or what happens if you don't have to fix it, but it by itself eventually will come okay. There are all kinds of scenarios. Vimein shel isur. Here's the second scenario. We don't have the isur be'ein <coughs> that is making the tafshul pogrom, or that in itself is pogrom. You don't have the mamosho shel isur. Elotamo bilvad, all you have is the tam, afilo isu meruba, the heter muat, 
mutter in poigim tzas. Wow. In this situation, we just finished saying that if you have more iser than a heter, no, 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 it's not, it's not bottle. We don't say no iser in tamar of gam mutter, you have more iser than a heter, unless it's completely rotten, right? But there is one scenario where you can have more heter, more, more iser than the heter, even if it's only pogum tzas, and it's still okay, if it's the time we're talking about. And not the real thing. And that's what the Shach explains over here. That sometimes you can have the Gedeira, the Shach says, a lot of Tam. A lot more Tam than the contents in the pot. That's very typical. We've, we've spoken about this problem. How could you have in the Gedeira enough to be Mavata the whole Tam in the Gedeira? Right? Right. Right. It's a, it's a very unusual situation to be able to have, depending on the type of pot. So the Shach says, even though that's the case here, that you have the pleta, much more taste coming out in the Gdera than you have in the heter of the Tavshil, since we're talking about Tam, and not the real Iser, and the Tam is Pogum, we're not Choyshosh, we're not concerned. That's the Chidoshi. The Chidoshi is by Tam, and the Tam is Pogum, there's no problem, even if it's more than the heter. Even if it's only... Now, what's, what's the reasoning behind this? Because the only reason we're making this usher is because of Tam. The Tam is Pogum. As it's brought down in the Sefer Torah, Sabayas, he explains this. If the whole reason you're going to make something usher is the Tam, and the Tam is really non-existent because it's Pogum, right? It's not Meshubach. It doesn't... It doesn't it's not uh, something that you have to reckon with. In other words, even if it's the majority... Because it's Tam. The only reason it's the Tam that we're making also. It's not the real Isra Be'in. It's only the Tam. If the Tam is no good, then what do you have? When you have the Isr, the real Isr, but it's defective. If you have the real Isr Be'in, it's something different. It's a, very, it's a different animal when you have the Isr or when you have the Tam. And that would be even if it became com- the Mamashas. Yeah, itself, right. It would still be, it would still be the right. same problem. The same problem, yeah. Yeah, that's what the Mechaber is telling us over here, that with Tam, it's only enough if it's Poigim Tzas, because you don't have the Mamoshes of the Iser anymore. Okay, so far so good. What do we see? That as far as types of Pagima, it doesn't have to be completely rotten for it to be called Pogum. Even if it's a little bit tasty, it's tasteful, it will render this Tafshil Mutter, possibly, as long as you have Roiv Heter. Is that it? Once you have the same or more Iser, no. But if it come, if we're talking about not the Iser being, we're talking about the Tam of the Iser, then we're better off. Even if you have the majority of Tam is Iser and the, the minority is the Heter, it would still be okay. Why? Because it's not Tam. The Tam Pogum is like it doesn't have any weight, any importance, any Hashivas. That's not Oser. If it's not also, you don't need even roi. Whereas with the regular, in the first case, where you have the Easter brain or the mamoshas of the Easter being completely mixed into the heter, you need at least roi. Not even 50-50 would make it. Now, we're talking here, regardless of its meaning. Right. Yeah, here it doesn't make a difference. Right. Right. All right. Now, we had, a, the, the Mahabra started here a yesh of the day. Right. Where does the yesh of the end? I wasn't quite okay. sure how far it goes. Are you talking about the Yesh Mishah Choychech or Yesh Mishah Omer? Yesh Mishah Omer. The Yesh Mishah Omer, the Hainu Dach, Kashadi Tarev, Ul Mu'ad, in Hainu Ruba. Right. Where does this Mishah Omer go? That's it. No, 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 I'm sorry. You, you're right. This plus the im ein shama moshe is all the same. It's all part of the same. So the the, the yesh misha choche. That's something else. That's already something, that's already something else. Yeah. Same yeah, because this is all the first part of the mechaber here is the rashba, mm-hmm. and I believe the rashba even talks about the second part about the tam. You know, it's like the Shach explains, it brings down the Rashba, that, you know, that's the whole idea of using a Kapela. Kapela would let us know that there's a Tom. 
And here, you're the cafe to yourself. And you're saying, oh, oh no, not only is there no tam, it's a tasteful tam. So therefore, you tasted it. <laughs> yeah, you can't continue to eat from it. Right. Or you know, it's, 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 a, it's a certain food item, you know, that just can be... could possibly identify and swallowing it. Yes, not always, no, not always. That's, yeah, that's a Shiloh, we spoke about that before. In the Basar and Cholov, you can do that on your own. You may come to swallow, remember that? Yeah. Oh, because of the, but then yeah. Rabbanan, yeah. Know. Yes. If you hold the then you pump. Yeah. But how, you know, Right. In this case, I mean, we're talking about a situation where you uh, you somehow know that this is a pogo mixture. You know it's a bug. It's a mouse. We'll see in the next segment that fell in. There are certain things that we know will be pogo in the top show. There are certain things that just... And we'll talk about them. You know, the famous one is the Machlagis Rishonim that we will soon see about the uh, meat in oil. Oil, you know, you, you want to buy oil now from a goy. Okay? Fine. Olive oil, vegetable oil, kosher. The problem is that he prepared it in his meat pot. Okay? He cooked it up, warmed it up for you, or whatever. It's busting the vela in the pots. So why don't you say there's a... No, you know for sure it was b'nei oh, was... You know for sure. You know a situation that he, he just made himself rabbit, rabbit for dinner. I don't know. <laughs> Here's an example. <laughs> anyway, the Tama Basar... According to the Rambam, is poigem the shaman? Because you don't want this kind of thing. Yeah, but some Rishonim say it's not poigem. So that, that, that makes a big difference. This is an interesting situation. What happens if you use the oil uh, later on in your fruits and vegetables? In your vegetables, so in the oil, the was made the, made the shaman poigem. But later on, this shaman will make the yerokois meshubach tasty because of the time of the bus on the <laughs> See how it becomes interesting. It goes, it becomes pogum. Yeah, 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 but wait a minute. <laughs> Don't, you can't have it just yet. It all depends if you're going to use it. You may use it, so so we're going to, so we're going to see that too. All of this could be now, the oil only, if the oil now stood for over the din of Tom the Gum in an no. absorption, that's not an apply in No, 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 we said that. I think it wasn't clear. Tom of Gum by Kedera is only in Kedera. What do you mean? Yeah, in Kedera, but not in food, any food. So that was, no, the, you don't say you don't say ain't a the food on the food. This cheese is from yesterday. <laughs> but no, yeah. no, no, the cheese or of this. course not. But what if uh, an onion of the taste no. of cheese? Also not over no. twenty hours. No, we Maybe don't say an that. onion is charred. So that's the, the, what exactly. makes it pogum is in the walls of the keli. Mm-hmm. That's what it says. That's what makes it pogum, but not in the food itself. But you can have food becoming rotten after a while. <laughs> that's that's for different reasons. Yeah. Anyway, there's an interesting Orach HaShulchan, and this is a very, you know, this could make a big difference. Orach HaShulchan seems to be lenient when it comes to certain bugs. He, he says that certain bugs, even though they did not become pogum, but they on their own are pogum. They just are bad tasting to begin with. And not that something happened to them, right? And like certain bugs, and I think he brings the, the Yisrubi Heter, he says, agrees with that. I mean, that's the, that's the sheet of the Yisrubi Heter, maybe Chavaz Das too, I think. Yeah. In other words, and they're birias, remember. Right. The, and these bugs are birias. But they themselves don't taste them. Uh, what? If they themselves don't right. Right. So he says because they don't taste right in their own right, they lose the chashivas of birias. They're not, they're not birias even. In the taruvas, they're not. That is, right. you still need drive. You can eat the birria, right? You can eat the birria even though it's it's a cockroach and you and it's distasteful. Right. But when it comes to dinner of taruvas, if it in itself is something so disgusting, you won't need the afilubel of la bottle. In other words, it will be bottle beroiv. There's no dim birria according right. to according to him and according to those sheetas that he, he goes by. There will be no dim birria and those that by themselves. Are totally disgusting to begin with. Uh, I mean, those is even that which you've done. You mean the Chinese like? <laughs> Whoever. Yeah. I mean, certainly, because there are certain people yeah. who eat. There's a question in the halacha in your day. We're going to see it here. The simon called achshave. Achshave means it's defective according to many or most, but to you it's not. You are, to you it's important. You want to eat it nevertheless. You give it importance. Is it also not? So the shagas ayah. 
talks about this because when it comes to medication, there is a little bit of an achshave. Because even though something may not be good for you, you want to have it. Even though it's not good. For even though it's reason. not good. For whatever reason. So that's called achshave. It gets choshuv. Maybe Thursday we'll get into that. Achshave. Choshuv. Yes, yes, yes. So that's a, that's a question too. That's a question in halacha, right, in medication especially. Achshave is something only that it plays a player role. Oh, the Hilchos Shabbos. Sure. If you remember, the, if you learn the Mishnayos, you'll see it. So, and as far as carrying the size of something, if it's worth anything to you, to some yes, to some no, it's in various halachas. You know, you know, it's for you, it is important. Even though for somebody else, it may not be a big deal. Yeah, that's called Achshu. But here we're dealing with the Tam. And that's, so, and that's of course, a separate uh, question here. So, but the pre Chodosh says, unless it's completely... Nisrach, it still has a Din Birya. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a machloikas, and of course this can make a difference. If you have stuff mixed in that is a Birya, is it, is it bottle or not? So this might be an additional heter if we're dealing with a Birya that happens to be totally disgusting to be with. Not every Birya is totally disgusting. Right? So it all depends, you know, if it is or not. So this, there are various shitas about this. And whether do we, we apply the Din of Birya or not. We can't have it. Right? It's still also, you can have, eat it, even though it's a small birya, but it's a birya, in a sense. But the only question is, Ligabe Taruvas, do we say, do we apply the halacha of bitul, that it's not even bottle by elef, if something is most completely, because of what it is, not because of something that happened to it, that it became nisrach. No, no, could it be uh, ugly? No, no, it's not the looks. No, it's not the looks. <laughs> the looks might be an issue of Balta Shaksu, maybe, you know, oh, listen, I wouldn't want to eat that, you know. Okay, so let's finish up with the Chaber over here. So, so, in reference to your question, yes, the first portion of the Seif really is the Rashba. Uh, let's see here. Except for actually the very beginning of the Seif, Gamze, Ein Sorg Sheif, Gumre Gamre, that's even taken from Rashi. So does the Mechavah now pass him like this Because by the way, with the Poigim Tzad, how do you know Poigim Tzad? How do you know Poigim Tzad? Where do you know it from? From the fact that G'der She'en Abbas Yoyma is Mutter. And that's the Pagim Tzad. You follow me? In the same way that G'der She'en Abbas Yoyma is Pogum, and that is what kind of a Pagim Tzad? Same thing with a piece of food that is Osir. If it's a little Pogum, it makes it Pogum. So we learned that, in other words, directly from the other heter that we have by Der Sheinu Beis Yerma. Yeah, this particular, that's a good question. Usually, Yesh Misha Omer can be indicative that the Mechavah may not necessarily side with it. In this case, he does. Uh-huh. This is a Yesh Misha Omer where he wants to alert us to, uh, to a, a detail over here, that even though we just said some say that that's only if it's an Isra Mu'at in Heter Meruba. Condition on what did he say like, from Rashi. Right, from, yeah. So this goes Dafka if it's only Pogim Ktsas. Right, so he, so exactly, but therefore he... Pogim Ktsas, then you have this additional therefore, condition. Therefore you have Rashi. the Rashi, but that says, but, but if it's completely Pogum, then it would be okay, even if you have the majority of Isra. So this, it's a good question what you ask. So Yesh Mishomer over here is not your typical Yesh Mishomer. This Yesh Mishomer is just to clarify what he said before. Which is interesting, it's not your typical Yesh Mishomer. Right, that's what yeah. I was wondering. Right. However, you do have a Yesh Mishomer, which is an interesting term that he uses. There are some that hesitate to be Machmer. Choychech means to hesitate to be Machmer. Yesh Mishomer, as you see in the parentheses, Mekabe Lehachmer Oyser. You know, was he, he, he's inclined. He's inclined to be machmir. Oh, he's, he's inclined. He is. Yesh okay. Mishach in the following situation. So in the following. In the, in the following. In a, in a new situation. Yeah, but Choychach will be that he is inclined to be. Yes. Loi Mashim, Higdala Isra Heter. If the Isra somehow contributed to the entire amount of the Heter, that it becomes very full, Atshu Mashbiach Yoiser. Because of that, it actually contributes it in such a way that it actually improves the whole Michael. When he's eating it together in this large mass or volume, 
mimashu pogum behefse taimo, much more so than the little bit of distaste that he tastes in the tam. In other words, he has a lot more gain here than he has a loss. There are, like you say, pros and cons, this mixture. The cons are, ugh, it's not the best taste, it's pogum. But, look at the whole thing, it does a lot to it. I actually enjoy, and I actually am happy with the byproduct, with what this did. So, Yeshu Shechoychech, that in this kind of a situation, even though it's still pogum, because if Igdila Yisum Midosu Lehet Ta'ashu Mashbiach Yoyser, and then it's also until it's completely gone, until it's completely distasteful, that's not even fit for human beings. In other words, there are some, there, are, there is an opinion, who wants to say, the run, that after all, there is some hanola here, there is some benefit here, there is something that it's doing to the food, even though there's a loss, there's a little bit of a, of a, of a disadvantage here, that it's pogum, ah, in the end, you're happy with the final result, but it's not completely pogum. So, yesh mi he says, it's not so, he's not sure. It's only in yeah, the but case... But he wants to be machmer. Is yeah. this only in the case where the food's by it? Or just that you're yeah. happy with the... No, no, it, it does actually something to the mass. Of, but it yeah. will, will make the taste less tasty. Yeah, it still will be less tasty. It's still pogum and still noticeably lo- no, pogum. But you are happy with the final result. And that happiness outweighs, he says, the little defectiveness in the flavor. Mm. It has to outweigh. And that's why Yishmi Shechoyfeh. Now, towards the end of the Seif, he goes back to the beginning of the sieve. Bamed Vorim Amurim. Even though I just started off saying in sieve base that a, a gum does not have to be pogum legamre, just has to be distasteful. Yafilo pogum sas. There's a condition, there's some strings attached, as they say. And what are they? Bamed Vorim Amurim, she pogum mit At all times, from the beginning of the cooking process until you put it in your mouth, it has to be pogum. There's no change in between. That initially yes, later no, initially no, later yes. The halacha that we've learned so far is pogum means pogum mit chilosu But here are two situations that are going to follow that the Chavah says that will make things a little bit different. Let's say at first it's okay. And later on it becomes no good. Or first it's pogum, and later it's mashbiach, it's also. Now what, what's going on over here? There are situations because of maybe the way something is cooked or prepared. At first, the, the two mixtures, it's pogum. Somehow later on, because you're going to bake it or cook it, the heat is going to do something to it, and it'll be okay. And by the way, we're going to talk about what okay means too. I just said okay. What's okay? Okay means I don't necessarily feel any difference. I don't. There is a tam, but it's not a shvach olive gam. We're going to see that's a very important area too. What if I know there is the iser is there, but there is no tam. I just there's no shishim, but there's no tam. Without a I, I just no, t- don't detect any tam. After all, certain things don't give off a tam, like gida So we'll talk about that next. What happens if, the, if it's just okay? It's not lif gam. Or, as far as I'm concerned, I don't even detect the taste. Machloik is in that too. So here, the Mechaber makes a very important exception, that what he said in the beginning of the seed base is only when it's spoken from beginning till the end. His first scenario is, somehow in the beginning it was okay. Later on, as a result of the cooking process, the, the heat, over time, you learn Hilchah Shabbos, right? In Hilchah Shabbos, there's a concept called Mitztamek V'yofelo, Mitztamek V'ralo. Remember that? Cholent is Mitztamek V'yofelo. The longer you cook it, the better it is. And there's certain halachas in Hilchah Shabbos as a result of that. Because this is, even though something was fully cooked, it could still be Mitztamek V'yofelo. And it could be a problem in Shabbos if you contribute towards that. In other words, it will continuously cook and be improved as a result of the continuous cooking. 
some things, mitzamek v'ralo, obviously. Um, most, perhaps. You cook it, when you overcook it, it's going to burn. It's going to be bad. It's going to feel sour, burnt. Right? So that's similar to this situation that we have here. If we have a situation where first, Ishbiach ulebesof poigem, in the beginning it was good. But somehow, somehow, as a result of the cooking or doing something to it, it becomes in the end poigem, then it's also. It's also in Madirabana. Why Madirabana? Because right now it's pogum. But the Rabbanon said something that really first is Shabbach. Even though later on it becomes Pogum, it's going to be Osir. How about the other way around? Avalim, oh, if it's Pogum now, Ulubesoyf is Shbiach, Osir too. But it's Pogum now, but somehow, later on, it just okay, became okay. I added some magic ingredient. Or something was done to it that after a while it's not felt as much. It actually feels good because... The, the pouring of the hot water does something to it. You know, different things react differently to cold, to hot. So that's also true. But the Shach explains when we say that, that something is now bad, but later on it will be good, that it's also, that's only also at the end. Right now when it's pogum, it's pogum. You know, if you were to eat it now in the state of pogum, then it's okay. It's only later on. What's the reason for this? The reason for this is very simple. Anything which is first pogum then becomes a shvach, it never, it never really became pogum. At the end. The Mephorshim explains something that is pogum now and eventually becomes a shvach, becomes okay at the end. It's also because it never really, really was a pogum to begin with. That now well, it was only temporary. It was like a temporary pgima. It wasn't a real pgima. And that's why the second situation is a little easier to understand than the first one in the Mechaber. The first one in the Mechaber is, it's now good, in the end it's also. In the end it doesn't. No, yeah. It's now good? And what is in the beginning it's, it's, it's shvach. It, it's tasty. Right. It mean tasty. Right. 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 So the first one is a little hard to understand. Why would it be also? First is, at the end it became pogum. Because in the beginning, it was okay. So, and at which point in time is it Asr? Now at the beginning, or even at the end when it's Even pogum? now. But now it's Asr for it because it tastes good. You're saying we're talking about... Right. <laughs> even now. Asr 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 now. Yeah. But even later, I should say. Yeah. When it's Pogum, still, even, it had a Shvach. at some point in time, it made it tastier, so now right. at the end, it's Pogum. And it's, it's yeah, in other words, what Mechab is really saying is something that he, he starts off saying. What I said about Gima has to be straight through. Always Pogum. You know, if you have a situation where yes in the beginning and not in the end, not in the beginning but yes in the end, that's not called pogo. So the second situation we understand because it never really lo- never was pogo to begin with if it can become good at some point. The first situation where it was good and then became bad, also in a sense, it was good. That was just temporary. Somehow, yeah, somehow it, it became pogo later on for some reason. Now that I want to eat this. Yeah. So why should it, yeah, so why should it be awesome right, so it's also with the Rabbana there. God says, says it tasted right. well, but now that it's also, it's only also with the Rabbana, right? because it's Pogum after all, but right. it's still also. Rabbana. Yeah. Okay, let's see the Roma. Ish Omrim Afal Gav, the Iser, Lif Gav, and Michael Mutter, even though the Iser, which is noise in Tam Lif Gav, and the Michael is mutter in a situation where they're mutter. Mikol mokom agdera sura. So you had iser in a mixture. It's bottle. It's pogum. The pot in which this was cooked, ish oimrim, is aser. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that soon. What happened over here? Here you have a food that is mutter because of the gam. Why is the pot aser? If you cooked in the spot within 24 hours, that the original iser that was that made the first dish pogo, but this time it makes a shlishvach. Nesar tafshil asheni im lo hayo boy shishim neged a iser a rishon. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. Yeah, the only. The only question is, if something was cooked, it would be uh, a piece of uh, 
the, uh, on that part, not. On that part, not, not exactly, but yeah. uh, what in other words, right. it's, it's, uh, it's become, uh, what do you call it, weakened. Yeah, the, yeah. That's, that's one of the questions about this. But so some say that, of course, if the time of Balua now is time of Balua, and it's a time of Easter, if somehow this time of Easter is going to give it, it's going to make the next cooking, Lishvach, it's going to be usher. If there's no shishim. Niklash, Niklash. Niklash, yeah. But let's say you mixed the first tafsha with a spoon. Then you took the spoon that was in a pot, right? So now you have in the spoon an isra that is absorbed. Then you took the spoon and you inserted it in another tafsha that is also pogem. Lo nesrak dera, the dera is not aser. No, no, it was the second dero. Vechem bedova she'en lo tam klal. Saying it's true with something that has no tam at all. You're going to yoyo she matichim bo advash, the pan where you put in honey. Afal pi she yesh bo rag le advorim, even though there may be some feet of the bees. Lo nesho yoyo vechol kayo yitzu bezer. Okay, this will require a little bit more explanation as to what exactly is being, why are we answering the pot? And why, in the case of the spoon, it does not answer the pot. But just to finish off, the, the, the small detail that I mentioned is the machloikas of the shach in the pre as far as if something does not have tam. The shach says that something which is a parve, let's say, parve meaning that no tam, no shvach, and no pgam, it's not bottle, it's not answer. Right? If it's a part of a time, in other words, I don't see any uh, any, uh, any contribution. It improve, yeah, and it's not it doesn't it's not to the depth of the yeah. nature. Yeah, and he brings a raya from Gita Nasha, that even the Gita Nasha was nimoyak that we learned it was completely cooked in and, and dissolved in the mixture. You need shisha can I get a Gita even though there's no time there. So of course the other place can hold that that's not a raya because Gita Nasha is an exception because the Torah made it usher. It doesn't prove a point of something that has no flavor either this way or that way that it should not be bottle, or that it should be bottle. But that's what the, the shach holds, as something which is not leshvach olive gun. But there is tam, apparently. You know, it's, uh, you, need, you need shishin. And the pre Chodosh says that something that has no tam bechlal, bechlal, that he, may, he wants to make a distinction. This bechlal, I don't taste the flavor. That's bottle beroiv. And only if there is a little bit of tam, just it's not leshvach olive gum, then I say that you need shishim. Right? So, so the pre-chodosh explained goes one step beyond the shach. In other words, maybe the shach meant two, that too, I'm not really sure. But when something has no taste at all, which to be implying that means even if there is no taste at all, because that's what the Gita Nasha, he brings his right from Gita Nasha, then it's not bottle. You need still need shishim. And Prichodos says, no, something that has no tam at all, there's no tam. If you can have a situation where something has no tam. But if there is tam, but it's not leshvach olef gam, then you need shishu. In other words, we, the only time we say tam doesn't make a difference is either it's pogum, or there's no tam, I don't taste anything. Remember, Gita Nosh is an exception. We all agree on Gita Nosh. Ain't beginning with noise and tam we hold. Nevertheless, over there it's also when the whole thing, the moyach, at least the whole thing was dissolved, if you, well, as opposed to taking it out. So we explained there that the whole thing was dissolved, so the whole, the whole issue is there. So, but the shock wanted to learn from that, that, that even if something has no time, it's still, you still need shishim. But the Prichodos says, no, if there's no time at all, it's not a problem. If there is some time, but it's just not lishmach or lofkam, then we require shishim. Premier Godem holds like the shach, that even if there's no, I think Rabbi Kivayger also talks about it, even if there's no time, it's still also a shishim. And this, of course, can make a difference sometimes when you have a situation where you can't detect anything. You just don't detect. <laughs> but, but the Issa was in there. You know? The Issa was in there. It may st- well, we're talking about Issa is no longer there because all we're dealing is with time here, right? not the real Issa. But it was there. It cooked. And then you took it out. You threw it out. Don't taste anything. It can't make a difference. And there's no shishim. <laughs> Obviously, if there was shishim, it's not a problem. So according to the shach, it would be usher. You would need shishim, even though you are not able to taste it. That's a very, that's a big chit of shit. Yeah, so because it's right? a completely whole uh, uh, argument of failure. 
in some ways. What good is a kefela? Yeah. If it doesn't have a tom, what is he going to no, do? No, no, we, we know that a kefela makes a big difference. We know that the, the kefela can determine if there is or not. Right. But he's but, saying if there is no tom, it's something yeah. that doesn't give a tom, what yeah. is the kefela going to do? Right. Right, so the kefela for sure is not going to take yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he still has to use it. Yeah. So a kefela right. no longer, uh, no longer in that, helps. In, in that case, a kefela will not help. And if and if it's something that does give tom, you, you, no, that, but I can't notice it, it that's right. better than something that doesn't even. Let's say I don't have sixty. Right. And I'm dealing with two substances. One right. doesn't give tom. Right. Another one does give tom. Right. And I'm not noticing either of the two. So the one that doesn't give tom will usher the tough shield when the one that doesn't give tom will not usher it. One more time. Again, if, I have, let's say yeah. two isurim that fell sure. into the pot. Okay. One doesn't give tom. Right. Something right. else doesn't give tom. Right. And one does give tom. Yeah. I don't have 60. But I can determine that the one that does give tom cannot be tasted. And the one that doesn't give tom obviously cannot be tasted. It yeah. doesn't give tom. So yeah. the one that does not give tom will usher the tough shield, whereas the one that does give tom, because I cannot taste the tom, no, 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 one, no, 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 no. One, something that gives time gives time. But I can't taste it. No, it no you can't say that you don't taste it. Yes. No, you can't say you don't a taste it. We, if we know something so gives time, kefela? we know that something gives time. Well, what is we the just we need a failure to determine if there is time in this amount. That's what I'm because talking about. Because it could about. be an amount. It could be a time kolush. It could be that some things Correct. are so potent, so yeah, strong. So what is the time kolush in something that doesn't right. give time? What's the yeah, argument so, of Tom so, so that's what he's saying. Some things don't give off a Tom. That's, that's the idea. So how's that's, Tom Kalush going to help me? No, so there is no Tom at all. Exactly. So if I have two things, one Tom Kalush and the other one doesn't give Tom, the one that doesn't give Tom is going to answer the whole part. It's not going to answer. The one that does not give Tom, yes. it's not going to answer. According to the Shach, yes. According, I'm sorry, according to the Shach, according to the Shach, if it's something that does not, I do not taste the Tom, it's not going to get, it's, it's going to so remain that, usher. That's that correct. Inherently, doesn't give tam like Gidan Nasha. He says right. he wants it to so I will need shishim. Tom, I will. Usher. I will need shishim. I guess. If I don't have sixty, it will usher. Right. And something that does give a tam kalush will not usher under sixty. Yeah. Well, it depends That's on how much. How, it depends how much the tam kalush really is. Let's assume. Forget about the kalush. It makes it more difficult to comprehend. You do taste a little bit of the tam. They're both going to be usher either way. What does it? Yeah. Mean? Once you once you introduce a kfela. Of course. According to the Mahabri, you according, can use a according, right. According, according, once you introduce kefela, he tastes the mixture. I don't have six. Obviously, and we know, and we know that this particular ingredient does not give off tam. That you won't be able to use a kefela. So that's my right. point. I have two right. ingredients. One right. gives off a tam. Sure. Another one doesn't give off a tam. Right. If the ingredient that does not that gives off a tam, they will both mix alone. Right. And the kefela tastes and says. I don't notice the taste of the right. mixture. Right. According to the Mahabur, one would be able to eat it. Right. But according to the Shach, if the second ingredient that's also in Israel does not give off a tam, right. then the the ingredient that does give off a tam because the tam cannot be tasted right. in this in this concentration would not usher it. But the one that does not give off a tam would usher it. Would usher it. it. So right. that's the paradox. Right. It's a situation where the Shach would say, since this is something that we cannot detect if there is a tam. It's still also regardless of the fact that there's no tam. You need shishim keneged, like by like by uh, by gida nosha, right? So the shach probably doesn't hold it the uh-huh. way the machaber does. No, no, it's a good question. We have to see. Perhaps there would be there would be some agreement. That's why the pre chadosh, I mean, who is of course uh, the main uh, main poisek here behind the the other opinion. There is no tam at all. It would be mutter, but. Any time that there is a little bit of a tam, shishim. So he's the one that makes it. Do we say that this really applies across the board? Does everybody follow that? We have to look inside the shot. Perhaps, you know, by reviewing the shot, maybe we can see that maybe he would hold that if something is completely tasteless, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. So we, and, uh, so you're right because of because of that the paradox that you're pointing out. We have to look further into it. So remind me. And we'll, go, we'll look into it a little bit more, what happens in such a situation, because then Kefela, it is interesting, but that's where the Prechodosh makes that difference. That obviously, if, not, if there's nothing, any, if there's no time whatsoever, then what's the question? Even if the Shach doesn't hold by yeah. Kefela. But the Shach seems to be saying that at least, Avadova she'ino noisen tam, lo lishvav lo lifkam, osur. Right? And even though the Shach wouldn't hold and, by and The problem was that he bought a raya from from the end beginning of the noisen tam. I forgot the end of 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 the end of
So he does see clearly. He wants to be a uh, raya from Yerushalmi. The Hada Amras lo leshvayf lo levgam also. So what does the Shem say on Kvema? Yeah. So there's, if there's no time whatsoever, if there's kind of a situation, it would still be also at least misafik. In other words, because we know that certain things need at least the whole shear of shishim is because we don't know, right? And we assume that by shishim it takes care of the problem. Kefela comes to help us in situations where. We have a kfela and we use him, right? Assuming that we use him, then he can make that determination. So your your situation is very interesting. What happens if you do use a kfela? And, and by the way, the yeah. shop might object to a kfela and not have. Well, that's problem. something else. But, yeah. but wait, but for different reasons. Right. Yes, right. Even if he does, he would not object to a kohen tasting. Yeah, of course, that's true. And in that case, yeah. So if a kohen doesn't trace the truma malati, he didn't want to go. It doesn't have the required hundred or four hundred, two hundred stories. Yeah, that's a whole different point. Yeah. Divorce Yeah. Anyway, it's a good point. There's definitely a good point, even though it seems to be very clear from the from the shach that it makes no difference kafela or not kafela if we know if we know that this particular iser does not give off taste. That's all. You know, we know, so therefore we can't use a kafela to help us out in that situation. So the paradox, yeah. In other words, you can. <laughs> something does give off taste, yeah. and then the kafela tells us there is no taste. No taste That's what we can use them. That's what that's what we could use because what's the, the real the real idea behind the kafilo determining that there's no taste is that at a certain point whatever taste was there is gone right mm -hmm. it's dissipated mm -hmm. we don't make that assumption when something we know gives off taste till shishim or beyond right so shach is saying you know this is a situation where I can't use the kafilo or your kafilo won't help me to determine if the issue is so diluted that it's bottle I mean that's a simple way of looking at the shach. Yeah. Here is not, here is not right. Here is not to be. That's something else. You know, we, that we already explained. If it's not Lefgam or Leshvach, but there is, I do sense something. Then everybody appears, everybody agrees That's that you need Shishin. Everybody. Shishin. Yeah. Right. Even the pre -chodosh. It's only in a situation where there's no flavor. I don't, I don't detect anything. I don't detect anything. I would say, like, well, like Ila was trying to say. Ordinarily, we use kvela and we detect nothing. It's mutter, but here the shach is saying that's a chiddush. It's according to the machabe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and, you and can use a kvela. Nevertheless, since I know in advance that this doesn't give a tam, I know that I have to know this in advance because if I if I don't know and I use a kvela, the kvela says no, it's mutter lechora. So it's one of those things that will not give him a taste, which is a very unusual situation, by the way. I think yeah, it's a. Why I'm why sure. Want to eat it? Yeah, exactly. But if somehow you ate it, you don't detect it, is it mutter or not? Well, you being a kafela, you would say, well, it's okay. I don't taste it anyway. It's probably bottled by now, even though they were machin vashishim. But theoretically, it's bottled. It's not so helpful. But it could be, by the way, it could be something that is really dissolved. Maybe that's what he's talking about, too. Something that's completely dissolved. Well, maybe, the there. maybe the issue is really in there, even though you can't detect, detect it. He doesn't say that. I'm saying that. If you took it out... All of these things should yeah. equally apply yeah. by something that yeah. under and has a taste is no, taste is no longer noticed. So yeah. all that you just said about yeah. something that doesn't have a taste should apply here as well. With respect to something that yeah. in an, uh, yeah. in, 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 intrinsically has a taste, but the yeah. taste is not noticeable right. because it, it's, it's, a, it's a... Obviously, we, we hold Tom Kaker, and that's only if there is Tom. So what's, why is the shark saying something that has no Tom, right. exactly. you know, you, you still need Shishim? It could be. It could be that it's also a Humrah. That it's all, in other words, the mascona. It's only the mascona. Mm -hmm. The mascona, we don't use a kefela. We're machmed to always use shish, even if there is no tam. We don't make that distinction. Mm -hmm. I think that makes more sense, but it's just more of a humra that he's saying that we're always going to require shish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. We'll we'll find out. Yeah. Okay, we'll continue Thursday.